learners in the previous session you have uh, learned about international tourism like uh, we have discussed also when tourism with travel for tourism it involves crossing a national border then we call it as international tourism today the focus of this particular session is on domestic tourism now when we talk about tourism uh, domestic tourism it is that type of tourism where the tourist is traveling within his or her country of residence all the tourism activities are being done within the boundary of his or her own country of residence so after this session you will be able to define what is domestic tourism in fact we have already defined it we will just uh, go into more characteristics of domestic tourism then you should be able to differentiate between the different forms of domestic tourism and then explain the reason behind the growth of domestic tourism and understand the significance of domestic tourism in the indian overall indian tourism scenario like uh, i have said also tourism domestic tourism it involves residents of a country traveling within the boundaries of their own country the world tourism organization it describes a domestic tourist as any person traveling to a place within the borders of his or her own country and which is other than his or her own usual environment for a period of less than 1 year but for at least one night and whose main purpose of visit is other than the exercise of an activity remunerated from within the place visited so if you look at this definition we can sum up some of the salient characteristics of domestic tourism like other forms of tourism also domestic tourism it does not involve travel for remunerative purpose you cannot if you say within india if you are going from one state to another for a leisure pleasure purpose then you are a domestic tourist but if you are relocating to another state for uh, employment purpose you are not a domestic tourist you are not counted as a domestic tourist domestic tourism it is one of the oldest known form of tourism and here the travelers they do not require to cross the international borders of the country and therefore we do not require any documents like the passport or the visa to travel then domestic tourism it relies more on surface transport networks such as road and railway networks air travel is also uh, done but basically if you look at uh, a country like india with a huge population then most of the people we travel by uh, railways so in domestic tourism uh, elsewhere in other countries also rail uh, rail and road networks they are preferably uh, or more preferred over and above the air network because even in european countries they have uh, the road the road network is more um, prominent whereas in indian context the rail network is more prominent in tourism in domestic tourism then domestic tourism it uh, encompasses travel from across in income groups whereas in the case of international tourism we have come to know that it is usually limited to higher income groups when you are traveling outside the country then obviously you need more money to spend or more money to accommodate all the requirements but when you are traveling within the own your own country then obviously lots of uh, uh, travel uh, documentations are not required so the amount of uh, uh money that is required for the tourism purpose in domestic tourism it is quite low compared to the international tourism so in domestic tourism people from across the income groups participate in it then demand for domestic tourism it is determined by factors within a country and therefore can be easily forecasted then the demand for tourism uh, domestic tourism can be easily regulated so this is also because it can be easily forecasted it can be easily re regulated as compared to international tourism in international tourism the bilateral relationship between two countries also matters but when you are within governed by the same government that obviously you have a common uh, form uh, so you you what laws applies in your state 
before you come out and when you go to another state it is the same whereas in international tourism it is different different uh, policies different laws different regulations are there so international tourism is uh, hard to regulate if certain uh, parts of uh, if, 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 if a certain country is going through a, a bad phase or there is a, a terrorist attack in certain other countries then it will be difficult or the regulation changes entirely but if it happens within the country it, one the part where the tourist uh, terrorist attack is uh, uh, going on it may be affected but other parts will uh, can go on as as it is so international tourism and the uh, domestic tourism there are quite a certain points of difference between those two domestic tourism it is one of the most important sector of a country's uh, tourism and hospitality industry in India but in India till a few years back it was the most neglected one often being relegated to the bottom rack in the priority list but then of late realization has dawned upon both the industry and the government that it is the domestic tourism which sustains the overall tourism industry in the country and in contrast to inbound or outbound tourism operation the huge volume of traffic that tourism uh, domestic tourism activates generates usually compensates its low profit margin of operation why the uh, operators and all they were aiming for international tourism or the inbound international tourism was because of the foreign exchange or the revenue which comes in terms of um, uh, US dollars whereas in uh, domestic tourism they feel the revenue generated is very low but like I said if the volume of uh, travel which is happening is so huge in domestic tourism it compensates for the low profit of operation now hundreds of years of travel history in India have uh, contributed to shaping the modern day domestic tourism that we see People have traveled from time immemorial for trade, pilgrimage, learning and other social purposes. The archaeological evidences also suggest that travel for purpose of trade it existed way back in the Indus Valley civilization. Now, historical evidences uh, suggest the presence of a wide network of uh, facilities for traveling traders and pilgrims such as dharamshalas are there the sharayas and other wayside amenities then major trade routes were well connected by a network of roads and amenities were built for travelers by the local rulers and uh, kings then again during the mughal rule in india the travel for pleasure received a further impetus the grand palaces and the beautiful gardens built by the mughals are still uh, important and prominent tourist attraction sites in india then the British era in India can perhaps be credited to the widespread of domestic travel in India because this period it showed an extensive uh, expansion of transport infrastructure in India along with travel facilities like um, bungalows and uh, circuit houses because the, the British uh, they traveled from Kula mountains uh, and hills in order to escape they traveled to Kula mountains and hills in order to escape the hot summers of India. So this set a precedence, a train for uh, many uh, places located at higher altitudes to function and to, to be developed into a hill station or resort. Then post-independence also, the Indian government, it continues to take numerous measures to promote the domestic tourism in India. Let us now look at some of the statistical figures regarding domestic tourism in India. Well, uh, if you uh, see uh, international tourist arrivals, they have been uh, frequently uh, collected, the data on this has been frequently collected on a regular basis. And, but data on domestic tourism are generally very rarely connected. So realizing the huge potential of domestic tourism development in the country, the Department of Tourism Government of India had for the first time conducted a pilot survey of domestic tourism at 22 centers spread all over the country in 1981-82. And some of the major findings are in, of this pilot survey were 
Age is an important factor with uh, 30 to 35 years being the largest group followed by 13 to 21 years. Then uh, majority of the domestic tourists that travel with family. Then people from business, service and professional form the bulk of the tourist uh, market. Majority of tourists they come from the middle class and the upper middle class. Domestic tourists they do not go for long holidays as compared to foreign tourists whose average length of stay in India is about 828.4 days. Now, and rail travel remains the dominant mode of travel. Why this pilot survey was very important was because it was for the first time that uh, certain information regarding the domestic tourism in India was uh, brought into the picture. Now, and this survey also showed the changing taste and the trends in the domestic sector. For example, um, uh, adventure and ecotourism is picking up. We are talking about 1981-82. It was low, uh, way long back. And uh, weekend uh, travel to nearby destination is increasing. Uh, besides the, the lift travel uh, concession, uh, which the government employees and the private sector employees uh, Besides the lift travel a concession which the government employee avail, the private sector of, uh, employees were also getting travel incentives and the number of honeymooners is uh, increasing, expenditure on shopping is increasing, convention tourism is picking. So from this we can have um, the tour operators or the uh, service providers, they have a rough idea of how the tourism, domestic tourism sector in India was performing. So this obviously helps them in making the marketing plans and the marketing strategy also. And after this pilot study, it took nearly a decade for the Indian government to take steps for conducting the next major survey regarding the domestic tourism sector in the country. The National Council of Applied Economic Research was commissioned to conduct the nationwide domestic tourism survey in 2002 and 2003. Then again, if you look at uh, the constitution of the Association of Domestic Tour Operators in 1996, with the purpose of consolidating the efforts of all the tour operators who are actively engaged in the promotion of domestic tourism. So this has helped to address some of the important missing issues in the tourism industry sector or the lack of attention and interest which the domestic tourism industry sector was witnessing. Now, one of the most recent study was conducted between the years 2014 and 15 by the National Sample Survey Office, uh, which is under the Ministry of Statistics and Programming Implementation to the Government of India. Now, if you look at the growth of uh, domestic tourism in India, it is an ongoing and a very uh, progressive uh, pace. It is growing at a pro very progressive pace because India is a land of abundance in terms of tourism resources and attraction. And this wealth of natural and cultural heritage of India, it has made it a natural choice for tourism development. So what happens is the inbound tourism no doubt are coming in, but the domestic tourists when we have a huge population for the people of the country with a huge population of India, when they have to go for um, say, uh, tourism purposes and they do not have that much of income or that much of money to spend, then visiting uh, or going for an outbound trip is out of bounds for them. So what we can resort is we can resort to the domestic tourism or your travel within your own country. So domestic tourist arrivals side by side along with the um, arrivals of the foreign tourists have also been increasing in India. And the growth has been phenomenal. If you look at even at the 2019 figures, the number of domestic tourist movement in India is much, much more than the total international tourist movement all over the world. So this is the kind of scenario that we are having and it is very important that the development of domestic tourism, it also is given its due importance
side by side along with the focus on the international tourism development which the ministry of tourism is focusing on so for the for the tourism industry in india domestic tourism it sustained the tourism operators and service providers during the lean period when the number of international tourist arrival dips so in domestic uh, tourism in this case it acts as a good demand substitute now uh, we have already talked about seasonality in international tourism so domestic tourism it is like a cushion when the uh, number of tourist uh, uh, arrivals international tourist arrival decreases during the lean period the number of domestic tourist movement it compensates for them and this makes domestic tourism a much more reliable source of tourist inflow for the tourism service providers and uh, domestic tourism uh, it is therefore recognized as a vehicle for regional development where individual states and union territories of india too have prioritized the development of this sector to attract more tourists from other states uh, the top uh, 10 uh, indian states with the highest uh, domestic uh, tourist visits for the year 2019 are given uh, here the states of Uttar Pradesh uh, and Tamil Nadu combined together to receive over 43% of the total domestic tourists in the country. Historical monuments along with religious places of interest can be credited to such a high amount of tourists. Now, this 10 states, top 10 states which we have listed, they account for almost 87% of the total domestic movement in the country. So you can see this 10 states is how important they are in terms of the domestic tourism scenario in the country. And but one point of caution is that the development of domestic tourism, while it has been steady, it has been sporadic and limited to just a few states like this 10 states that we have listed uh, above. Then this uneven spread of tourism growth also highlights a gap in terms of benefits that tourism development can lend to the regional economy. Now let us look at some of the reasons why the growth of domestic uh, tourism in India was taking place. One is the steady economic growth. India in the last decade it witnessed a steady economic growth thanks to the development across sector. So it is not only across the uh, manufacturing factor it is uh, the development across the agricultural factor the, the agricultural sector the it sector so development across sectors have been uh, taking place and this has resulted in an upward trend in the country's gross domestic product or the gdp and uh, the increasing disposable income. So this increasing disposable income among Indian is considered to be one of the most important reasons behind the growth of domestic tourism in India. And if you go by a 2019 report by the World Economic Forum, India is poised to become the third largest consumer market behind only the United States of America and China. So the consumer spending in India is expected to grow nearly 6 trillion US dollar by 2030. So this is as per the report which is given by the World Economic Forum. So domestic tourism is one of the main beneficiary of the growth in disposable income. Then uh, we have discussed before also, we have, I have uh, mentioned it, India's growing middle class. So this steady economic development in India, it has resulted in employment generation in the country. And this has moved a large number of people into the middle income and the upper middle income group. And this uh, group, that is the middle class and the upper middle class, they aspire for a better and a finer lifestyle and, one, uh, and form one of the largest segment of domestic tourism in the country. Because when everything, your basic necessity is fulfilled, then people travel is one of the most prominent reason that people want to spend their money. So, and, uh, and that is where the domestic tourism it, uh, expands. Then the changing lifestyle. 
With uh, the increasing disposable income among the people, the propensity to travel for pleasure has also witnessed a rise, as we have already said, and not just the mainstream tourism destination. Even the smaller and coming upcoming tourism destination are benefiting due to this trend. Experiences to such tourism, tourist segment. Then again, the improved tourism infrastructure is also another reason why we have witnessed a growth in the tourism, uh, domestic tourism scene. India's transport infrastructure in the recent years have seen recent development, rapid development, whether it is India's uh, air transport network connecting even the entire three cities or the construction of express highways that have considerably reduced the travel time. Tourism has been one of the natural beneficiaries to expansion of transport networks in India. Then again, uh, you have seen the number of the rise in the number of ownership of cars among the middle and the upper middle income groups. And this has encouraged the self-drive vacation in India. For example, we have witnessed a number of um, working uh, people. Uh, they take a short break, weekend breaks. So they do not prefer going by booking themselves um, into a formal network like an air, airlines or a railway. What they take is they take their own cars and then they drive to a destination which is about uh, say 300 to 400 kilometers which they can easily accessible by their own cars. And this gives them the freedom to enjoy or to plan their itinerary or to plan their tour according to their own uh, at their own pace and uh, the type of experience that they want to uh, as they go about. So this is uh, this trend of self-drive vacation in India is possible because of the improved road network in India. So the initiative by the Ministry of Tourism and the State Tourism Board is also one of the factor for uh, domestic tourism to come up at such a rapid pace. We have a very active Ministry of Tourism working overtime and both at the state and the uh, central level various, various initiatives has been launched to encourage investment in India and this includes tax holidays, single window clearance for tourism projects, attractive investment schemes and many other incentives. So this has resulted in a number of multinational hotel brands invest, investing in India. And this uh, initiative it has made the tourism supply more robust and to meet the continually increasing demand for tourism products in India. While you may think the investment of the international multinational uh, hotel brands in India would benefit only the uh, international tourists, but the picture is otherwise, if you look at the other side also, domestic tourists, they would also aspire to stay in branded hotels. So if they can if they go to a certain um, uh, other, other states for the tourism purposes, many Indians are checking into high-end hotels. So the uh, number of multinational hotels brands in India benefits not only the international tourism but also the domestic tourism. Then various promotional and advertising campaign run by the center and the central and the state tourism have also resulted in channelizing demand for tourism services in smaller and in upcoming destinations as well. Then relevant uh, uh, trends in domestic uh, tourism in India, this is again a very important uh, characteristics that we need to know because if we know the trend, then we would also know how to cater to that trend. When there is a demand, then the supply has to be there. So if you know the demand, then supplying it would be easier. So if we know what the tourist wants or what exactly are the tourists expecting out of the uh, when they go to another state or another uh, another area within the own country, it becomes very easy for the service providers to step up and then fulfill the gap that they see in the business environment. Let us use the data from one of the most recent studies conducted between the years 2014 2015 by the National Sample Survey Office, Ministry of Statistics and Programming Implementation, Government of India.
Here we would be able to know what are the purpose of uh, travel, then uh, what, what all are the trends which a domestic tourism is um, going through and it will be really helpful for the service providers to design the product according to it. Holidaying, leisure and recreation is one of the most important purpose of domestic tourism in urban India and uh, this is because of the increasing disposable income among the young urban middle class we can credit it to them for this for this demand in the domestic tourism also the younger uh, working population they are believed to be more inclined towards frequent holidaying to a nearby destination they are not going for longer vacation they are going for shorter shorter breaks for example uh, say a weekend break but at least five or six times a year instead of a one month break in a whole year so this is um, and as per this study the month of may june and october it generates about 40 percent of overnight trips among the trips completed during the year 2014 and 15 with leading purposes like we said it is being the holiday leisure and recreation health and medical is another um, reason why people travel in India uh, like in most countries in the world we have healthcare facilities which are unevenly distributed between the urban and the rural areas so there is a trend where the rural household uh, they showed uh, more travel on account of health and medical treatment where when they visit the urban areas but if you look at the wellness uh, tourism point of view we have two types one is the medical tourism one is the uh, wellness tourism medical tourism more of rural area people coming to the urban urban area for to avail the medical facilities well wellness tourism is more of a relaxing it has got no medical intervention so here the urban tourists they travel to the rural areas then social visiting family and friend is another reason the culture of India is deeply rooted in the family values so traditionally festivities and other celebrations they are considered incomplete without the gathering of family and friends so this is except uh, understandable when we say visiting friends and families is one of the most important uh, reason for domestic travel in India religious and pilgrimages uh, travel is uh, in fact the very essence of the cultural fabric in India and uh, we have numerous religious belief and sex and people travel to places of religious importance uh, so pilgrimage is one of the oldest forms of travels in India then travel for business is yet another important reason for growth of domestic tourism in India we have the IT hubs many uh, Hyderabad is there Delhi is also one of them Bangalore is there so travel to this uh, major cities for business purpose is on the rise also the proliferation of international hotel chains can be credited to business tourism uh, then we also have a number of international trade shows convention and conferences making cities like Delhi, Mumbai and Bangalore a uh, uh, hub of business related travel in India. Then education and training is yet another uh, main reason. We in the field of uh, higher and technical education we attract students from across the country. So uh, we have people from uh, one state uh, of in fact most of the state in India coming to Delhi for higher education purpose so travel for the purpose of education may also include short haul travel for the purpose of research and other related purposes for example uh, going for uh, academic uh, conference attending two or three days or you are going uh, or a researcher is going to another part of the country for collecting data for PhD or the research work then if you look at the mode of travel, Indian Railway is one of the largest rail network in the world connecting the length and breadth of the country. So through the subsidiary uh, arm of the Indian Railway which is the Indian Railway Catering and Tourism Corporation or the IRCTC, they have endeavoured to promote domestic tourism in the country. 
तो भारत दर्शन रेल टूरिज्म पैकेजेस आते हैं द बुद्धिस्ट टूरिस्ट सर्किट ट्रेन लग्जरी ट्रेन लाइक द पैलेस ऑन वेल्स दिस आर सम ऑफ द मोस्ट सक्सेसफुल टूरिज्म इनिशिएटिव ऑफ द इंडियन रेलवेज then air travel has also been over the years uh, a growing uh, choice of travel among the urban indians we have the uran scheme uh, which is a regional airport development and regional connectivity scheme of the government of india then road travel as you know has always been one of the most convenient and popular mode of transport in india and the country has endowed it over more than 132500 kilometers long network of national highways so when we talk about accommodation we have varieties of uh, accommodation units uh, starting from the budget hotels to the uh, the high end hotels and as per the study about 91% of the overnight visitor trips from rural areas completed they stayed with friends and relatives or in other places whereas in the case of urban travelers the place of stay during trips were friends and relatives at 36.2% other places at 33.2% and hotels and guest house are also there then the tourism expenditure among uh, the domestic tourists this is also important to understand because the nature and the extent of tourist spending on various tourism Uh, components it allows us to recognize the importance that tourists associate with each of these com- uh, components so let us look at some of the advantages uh, just to uh, wrap up the session we see tourism uh, domestic tourism has been the cushion when it comes to the seasonality issues in uh, which the international tourism scenario it depicts when it comes to the lean season and then we have also seen that the, the domestic tourism is not greatly affected to the disturbance in a global political and economic climate making it a more reliable source of income for the country especially at times when uh, when international tourism tourists do not travel due to the uh, situation of unrest of uh, other or such other reasons and domestic tourism can support the tourism service providers So in a nutshell we have a talk about uh, the features of domestic tourism we have also explained the reason behind the growth of domestic tourism in India and I have also gone through some of the statistics or the figures of domestic tourism and the importance that the Indian government both at the center and the state level has been emphasizing on the growth of domestic tourism apart from focusing only on the international tourism because domestic tourism is one of the area in spite of the low uh, profit amount of profit it generates the amazing uh, volume of travel that domestic tourism in india is there it compensates for so many things thank you so much for this session